Over the past four seasons, New Orleans has had one of the best rosters on paper, but each year they've dealt with some sort of obstacle. Last season, the Pels started 23-12, and and they looked like a legit contender. Unfortunately, the team spiraled once Zion got hurt, and they ended up missing the playoffs altogether. Through the first 10 games of this season, New Orleans had a 4-1 stretch, followed by a 5-game losing streak. In the midst of that losing streak, Zion made headlines when he said, I'm trusting the process, I'm trying my best to buy in right now. Considering all the rumors about Zion being unhappy in New Orleans, this wasn't a great thing to hear while the team was struggling. However, the Pelicans had a team meeting afterwards, and they've been thriving ever since. They've won 5 of their past 7 games, with one loss coming on a last second shot against Minnesota. In case you're still sleeping on the Pelicans, I'm going to be explaining how their recent play has them looking like contenders. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year, and your support goes a long way. With all that being said, let's get into the video. The most noticeable change with this team has been their play on defense. During their 5 game losing streak, New Orleans gave up 123.8 points per game, which would be third worst in the league. Over the past 7 games, the Pelicans have allowed just 108.1 points, which is much better. A big reason why they've improved is because everyone is giving effort on that end. Throughout their careers, Valanchunas and Zion haven't been known as good defenders. While they still have their drawbacks, they've been playing strong defense lately. What I've liked the most from Jonas is his defense on smaller guards. He's protected the rim on drives, and he's contested shots well on the perimeter. In Zion's case, his overall effort has been better. He's been viewed as someone who takes plays off on that end, but that's changing. Zion has stood his ground in one-on-one -on -one matchups, and there's been many instances where he hasn't given up on a play. They still aren't perfect on that end, but when your worst defenders are playing well, your opponent won't have any weak links to attack. Someone else I've been impressed with is Brandon Ingram. Ingram's defense has improved over the years, but he seems to have taken another step this season. Ingram is 6'8 and has a 7'3 wingspan, making him a very disruptive defender. When you combine those physical attributes with great effort, you get incredible results. Ingram has been flying all over the court, switching, contesting shots, getting steals, and it's been amazing to watch. You can't quantify it, but it makes a huge difference when your best offensive players go all out on defense. It rubs off on the rest of the team, and that's exactly what's happened lately. When you look at the body language of guys like Jose Alvarado, Najee Marshall, and Larry Nance, you can tell they're feeding off the effort of their stars. The energy from the second unit has been phenomenal, and they're contributing to the Pelicans' elite team defense. The Orleans switches and communicates so well, which forces their opponents into a lot of tough shots at the end of the shot clock. While you could praise everyone on this team for their defense, the two standouts have been Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones. These two are great all-around defenders, and they make life difficult for opposing guards. They've held Luka to a 5 for 16 8 turnover game, they limited Deer and Fox to 14 points on 18 shots, and when they played the Clippers, Westbrook and Harden combined for just 11 points, on 3 for 16 shooting. They have such great anticipation skills which helps them stay in front of their man. They're both near the top of the league in deflections as well, and they understand how to make sound defensive rotations. Out of all the two-man combinations on the roster, Dyson and Herb have the best net rating when they share the court. With Dyson being just 20 and Herb being 25, this could be a dominant defensive duo for years to come. On the offensive end, New Orleans is putting more of an emphasis on ball movement. During their first 10 games, the Pelicans averaged 22.9 assists. In their last 7 games, that number has jumped up to 30.1 per game. The Pelicans are getting into their sets quickly, and the ball has rarely stuck. Everyone in the rotation can attack off the dribble or find an open teammate, and it's led to some beautiful basketball. Something else they made good use of is Valanciunas' screen setting. It's not easy to fight through one of Jonas's screens, which forces the defense to switch more often than they'd like. This allows New Orleans to exploit mismatches and get easy buckets. Against Denver and Sacramento, the Pelicans tried switching Jokic and Sabonis onto Zion. 
Because Zion is so strong and explosive, he proved to be a tough matchup for those two. Jonas has also generated good looks for Ingram. By setting off-ball screens for BI, he doesn't have to work as hard to score. There are a lot of plays where Ingram can simply rise up for a jumper without much defensive pressure. If the defense tries to close the gap on him, Ingram can use their momentum against them and finish at the bucket. Between the passing, movement, and screen setting, the Pels' offense is looking much better and it will only improve once their shooters come back. Some teams have played zone or clogged the paint against New Orleans and found success. As good as Herb and Dyson have been, they aren't knockdown shooters. Teams will live with Zion and Ingram kicking the ball out to them, but that strategy won't work much longer. CJ, Matt Ryan, and Trey Murphy will all be back soon, and they're great shooters. CJ has shot 38% from three this year, Matt Ryan is hitting 47% of his threes, and Trey Murphy is a career 40% three-point shooter. While it could be great to have them back, their returns could disrupt the team's momentum. While CJ and Trey are two of their most talented players, it's going to be interesting to see how they're incorporated in the rotation. As I've touched on, Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones have been an elite defensive duo, and the team has been dominant when they've shared the court. While CJ is far better offensively than Dyson or Herb is, he's clearly the worst defender out of the three. I can see the argument for CJ transitioning into a sixth man role, because the Pelicans seem to have a perfect mix of offense and defense in their current starting lineup. I think Trey Murphy will be a more seamless fit once he comes back, but he's another mouth that needs to be filled. Last year, Murphy averaged just under 13 points on 9 shot attempts before the All-Star break. After All-Star weekend, he averaged 18 points on 12 shots per game. CJ and Trey are both skilled offensive players, and they'll definitely improve this team's spacing. However, they're both accustomed to getting 10 plus shot attempts, which could disrupt the Pelicans' offensive flow. For all I know, this team will look even better with them back in the lineup, but I'd say my concerns are reasonable. Another problem looming over this team is injuries. While Zion and Ingram have been relatively healthy this season, they've each missed significant time in recent years. Over the past two seasons, Ingram has missed 64 games, and we all know how injury-prone Zion has been. Obviously, I hate having to talk about injuries, but it's been a recurring issue with this team. On top of that, we need to see more examples of them handling adversity. It's a great sign that they were able to have a team meeting and start winning games afterwards, but they're not going to be this hot for the rest of the year. It's easy to be happy and bring good energy when you're winning games, but your true colors show when things aren't going well. In the past, Zion's poor leadership was a dark cloud hanging over this team. The Pelicans will inevitably go through a rough patch in the future, and how they respond will reveal a lot about them as a team. If they continue to show that they can fight through adversity, and they're able to reincorporate CJ and Trey back into the fold, I could see them going on a deep run this postseason. They're arguably the deepest team in the league, and this may be the year New Orleans finally lives up to the hype. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. With all of that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.